Hi guys, welcome back. We are now looking at um, video two for chapter three with Professor Ren. The last thing we did was go over the difference between demand and quantity demanded. We are now moving on to the law of supply and we're going to do the same exact thing. So if a product has a buyer, a product must first have a seller. So for instance, you know, I keep using these photographs as if we are looking at a, maybe a company that sells juices or it sells smoothies, right? Well, there's a buyer and there's a seller, probably many buyers against the one seller that is actually making this product and providing this product. The law of supply is pertinent to them. The law of supply, look what it's telling you, it's those who provide the product. Now, the variables of one and two are identical to the law of demand because they, are, they go hand in hand. Every product that has a supply curve has a demand curve. Every product that has a demand curve also has a supply curve. They always go on the same graph. So they actually share the same exact variables. The first variable is the price. The second variable is the quantity. To distinguish the quantity provided, inventoried, from the quantity purchased, we call it quantity supplied instead of quantity demanded. So if I flip back really quickly to the law of demand, you will see price and quantity. They are the same exact variables, but this one is called quantity demanded. With the law of supply, you are looking, looking at quantity supplied. And the relationship is direct. Price impacts quantity supplied directly, right? You are looking at when the price goes up, the quantity supplied follows. Why? Because the seller wants the higher price. But put yourself in the shoes of a seller. It's a little bit more difficult because even though all of us are buyers, not all of us have sold something. But put yourself in their shoes for a minute. You're selling a product. You want the highest possible price. So when the prices go up, that signals to you, hey, the market is hot. This is good for me to push my product. So you end up making more available or producing more if you are the manufacturer. If the prices are dropping, you do the opposite, right? You're like, hey, this is not such a good deal for me. Prices are dropping, it eats away at my profits. The seller is highly motivated by profits. So what do you do? You cut back on your inventory, which is why we see seasonal things. When something comes in season, there's more of it. When the season is done, there's less of it because the seller is following the prices. So when the price goes up, more of the product is made available. When it comes down, less of it is made available. The quantity supplied is called um, production. So another way of understanding production, if you're reading an article, if you're sitting in a boardroom, people are talking about the inventory that they have, that's quantity supplied. They're talking about the units they are making available, that is quantity supplied. They're talking about production or output, it's all quantity supplied. So it makes perfect sense to understand that production, output, inventory are quantity supplied. Quantity supplied isn't something we use in everyday language, right? Nobody really goes to somebody and say, hey, what is our quantity supplied today? But they say, what do we have in inventory, right? They are talking about quantity supplied. Don't use sold because whenever we talk about like quantity sold, we're really looking at how much is getting bought because once it sells, it's like out the door. A buyer took it and you know they're on their way home. So we're talking about inventory, output, or production. This is the law of supply, the direct relationship between price and quantity supplied. Variable one and variable two are the same as the law of demand. Now, if you look at it graphically, the law of supply has an upsloping curve. You're looking at the price here on Y and you're looking at the quantity on X, but together they actually create an upsloping curve. So look again. Price is on the vertical axis, quantity supplied is on the horizontal axis, they are variable one and variable two. But the curve is upsloping. This is, this is in which exact way it differs from the law of demand. So points A and points, point B are on the same curve. This is called a movement along the curve. What you're seeing is when the price was lower, how much is provided is also lower. When the price is higher, how much is being provided is also higher. Now, in this case, we're making a little bit of an assumption that the price rising or dropping has to do with the willingness of the buyer to pay that price. So, for instance, this is a refreshing, crispy drink. In summer, probably sells for more. 
Take, for instance, all those lemonade stands or juice stands, you know, in Cape Cod. Uh, in winter, the price is lower. There are fewer of them open. And if they're open, they're providing less. But when the price increases in summertime, um, then it is rather the opposite, right? Then in this case, you are looking at more is being provided. This is a very typical representation of the law of supply. Now, this curve can, you know, kind of bow out like this. Um, but it is, it is, it can go up and then it can kind of teeter off. It can be an S shaped curve, but notice what it's doing is it's basically, if you draw a straight line, you will see that it's going upward. This is your law of supply. How much the seller is willing to provide at various prices. The higher the price, the higher the quantity they provide. Now, the same thing we did with the law of demand, we're going to have to do with the law of supply. This is that tricky part. What is the difference between supply and quantity supplied? Remember, quantity supplied is a variable number two that belongs to supply. Supply has two variables, price and quantity supplied. This is its second variable. So when you see it here, and it's called a movement along the curve, you're seeing that the price jumps from 80 to 116. With it, the units go up from 60 to 70. This is simply price is in charge of quantity supplied because those are our variables one and two. When the price goes up from 80 to 116, the quantity jumps by 10 units from 60 to 70. One curve, not the two points are on the same curve. This is a very simple price change. It's usually short lived, by the way. When the price is the reason, you have more short term changes in the market. If you look at this one here, First thing you notice is there are two curves. The fact that there's a shift in the curve. Now the curve should have shifted leftwardly, but it shifted outwardly or to the right, in this case, rightwardly. Look at it, it's a shift. There are two curves, possibly three, possibly four, but there isn't one curve only. And the points, if you look at them here, because it shifted to the right, we went from point a right here where the price one and quantity one down to point B which is price two and quantity two. You see how the first point is on S1 which is the first supply curve and the second point is on S2 which is the second supply curve. Well clearly there is a shift here. The curve has shifted. The range of prices is different and the range of quantity down here is also different. That is a non-price determinant that has actually caused it to occur. In other words, what's causing this shift is a variable number three. It's not present on the graph. On the graph, you see variable one, the price. You see quantity supplied, which is variable two. You do not see variable three. Variable three, there are seven possibilities and we're gonna go over them as well. Those seven variables number three are called non-price determinants of supply. And what they will do is change supply itself. So when you say quantity supply changed, you're saying price is the culprit. When you say supply changed, you're saying not the price. Something other than the price is actually the culprit. And there are six specific ones for demand and seven specific ones for supply. And they only share one in common. They have just one that actually is in common between them. I am going to stop this video here and then we're going to go over those non-price determinants in our next video.